guys welcome back to the book and beverage review where today we will be reviewing charles degelman's gates of eden it is a timepiece that spans between 1945 and 1970 and talks about what it was like being a youth in america at that time especially one that was fighting for um racial equality and to get out of the vietnam war the burgeoning vietnam war as well so yeah this was a very interesting novel can't wait to talk about it and we will be reviewing this um smart water passion fruit mango i've already poured some into my glass so let's sip some water and get into our story That has a very nice mango flavor to it. It's just kind of light though. I almost wish there was more of a mango flavor. I don't really taste a lot of passion fruit, um, but I'm sure it's there somewhere, but this is still very tasty. I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw an author reading the first few pages of his book and I was wowed. It was an exceptional opening caught your attention. You know, it's like a New York Times bestseller opening. It was wow. I really enjoyed this story. I thought it was super interesting. So what happens is in the beginning of the novel, you have an explosion and you have a woman who was a part of the explosion. She is covered, she's naked and she's covered in all this debris. And a woman comes over and puts a blanket over her and tells her, I'm not going to call the police. And you're like, what? What is going on? Fantastic opening, makes you want to read the rest of the book. And I did. Um, so basically, these are all the events leading up to the explosion. Now, with that being said, the beginning of the book is kind of chaotic because you have five or six different stories. Of course, the characters in them will eventually convene at some point and you'll see how their lives fit in together. But the beginning still comes off as five separate stories. And there is, um, and, and by page 50, you have already heard five different perspectives and also what's going on with two different presidents and um, a lot of different cities and states involved. And it's just kind of chaotic in the beginning. And it was a little hard for me to read and get through. But after about page 60, it became a much more cohesive story and much more understandable. And that's when I really started enjoying the novel. I found myself really rooting for some characters and some other characters such as Madeline. I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Not, not so much as rooting for her, but, you know, still uh, understanding her perspective of things. A good portion of this novel centers around these kids trying to either be at demonstrations, organize demonstrations or protests, and how their organizations are trying to fight racism in the South, racism across the country really, and trying to avoid the burgeoning war and wanting to avoid this sort of slight that they feel from the U.S. government to take soldiers there to hurt the Vietnamese and hurt us. It was a very honest and gritty novel. I have heard a lot from different veterans of the Vietnam War and even modern wars that say that they felt going there, they felt like it was wrong and they felt very traumatized about it, not just because of the sense that war is traumatizing, but they really didn't know what they were doing there and they felt like the bad guys. So I don't know either way, but what I can say is that it was very eye-opening to see one of the characters take a plane and go to Vietnam, not as a soldier, but just as a, a citizen of America wanting to report back what's happening. I would have liked to see a little bit more depth of what David went through. Um, it just kind of glosses over it, and maybe that's the type of person he was that he just kind of saw it and tried to not let it affect him. But I would have liked to see more about how his PTSD from the experience or depression from the experience affected him. Uh, but that being said, I really enjoyed it. And I think that it was very, um, in a sense, very accurate to what a lot of people have said about that time. Again, I wasn't there. I don't know. But it brings up the conversation. It really does. I was so invested in these character stories that by the time the end rolled around, I forgot about the beginning. And I was amazed again when the explosion happened to find out how it happened and the characters involved because I did not expect that coming. I was super impressed with this book. There were some issues though like I felt like this was not really as much on the author as 
it might have been more of an editor's issue. I know the author is an editor, but this definitely needed to go through a few more professional sets of eyes because in, for instance, in page 45 to 47 on my Kindle, there was a good portion, uh, actually about two pages worth of block text that was italicized. Like the text was italicized and people were having um, conversations and dialogue in there, which usually, and even in the novel, the author uses um, using italics as more of like what the characters were thinking, traditional uh, ways that we use it in literature nowadays. But I think that was just an error. I think it was accidentally italicized and not pushed back. I don't know if that was in the hard copy version. And then later on, on page 71, the name David was accidentally used instead of Roger. This is Roger's story. And the name David is used to refer to Roger. And that is very confusing, considering you have a novel that does switch back and forth between characters. So I had to reread that and figure out what was going on. Um, which was a little annoying, but it wasn't, it didn't hamper my enjoyment of the story. Again, this happened on page 79, where Connie was talking to a girl named Franny, and I couldn't understand who was talking at that time, so I had to reread it a few times, but, um, yeah, this is not something that I blame on the author as much as I blame on an editor. I don't know who saw it, but there needed to be more editing done on this. Um, but when I started my channel, I knew that I wasn't going to harp on editing mistakes just because that, um, they're frequent. I see editing mistakes all the time, even editing mistakes on, on books that are on the New York Times bestseller list. And you think to yourself, how could that have gone to publication and having that mistake? And I guess it happens, you know, the authors get, um, blind from being in their work so much. So they need, it's absolutely necessary to have a second set of eyes and, uh, as for my final thoughts, I thought this was an exceptional novel. I think it's still something to read. Even with some of the issues that I found, I still think it's a great book. I still think it's very enjoyable. And I know that on the end page of the book, the author said um, that he that he wanted a discussion about it. You know, it's hashtag Gates of Eden on Twitter. And I think that that's really what the book is about. It's about talking about the experiences of what you think about what they're reading. It's talking about what um, what people who lived at that time have to say. I think that this is an important piece to bring people together as opposed to just sitting and reading your book by yourself. It's interesting and a fun book for that, but there were a lot of ideas presented here that are... Um, a lot of ideas presented here that people need to talk about. One was that the youth at that time felt that the U.S. government was like an enemy of the people. So, yeah, these are big ideas. Very interesting, very fascinating. And this is a must read. Absolute must read. I give this book four stars. I think it's something that you guys should pick up. I think it's something you guys should consider. And I think it's something you guys should join in the discussion in. As for the water, I do like this water. Um, I don't love it though. I think that I would mix it with maybe like um, a strawberry club soda or something just to give it a little bit more pop and a little bit carbonation, I guess. Um, I'm still gonna, for what it is, I knew what it was going into it. It's just gonna be a flavored water, no sugar, no nothing. Um, for what it is, I still wanna give it like, I don't do half stars, so like, I guess I will give it like a three. A three is definitely fair. I would buy it again, maybe. So I'll give it a three. Thank you guys so much for watching. I want to give a special thank you to Charles Degelman for helping me out and trying to figure out how to get it on my Kindle and for allowing me to review this work because it is thought provoking. It makes me sit down and really question what I've heard and what I think about that time period. Um, and yeah, it was a very provocative read and you did a great job. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to sipping a beverage and getting into a new story with you soon. Take care.